Well, good evening and welcome to the 2021 Heritage Toronto Awards. I'm Ismail Alpha, host of CBC's Metro Morning. Now, this year, year marks the return of the Heritage Toronto Awards and its celebration of excellence in the city's heritage sector since 1974. This year, for the first time since the awards began, Heritage Toronto is hosting the awards virtually. Now, whether you are in Toronto or elsewhere around the world, tonight we gather to recognize Heritage's achievements over the past two years. Now, I'm delighted to be with you this evening to celebrate the contributions made by this year's 47 nominees to the Heritage of Toronto. This evening, we will present awards in community heritage, uh, book, public history, and built heritage. Now, during such a challenging time, the heritage sector has brought communities together both virtually and in real life. Tonight, we celebrate the sector's creativity, its ability to adapt to and even thrive in unprecedented times. Through the efforts of the 47 nominees that we are showcasing tonight, Toronto's heritage sector is building back and it's building back better. I'd like to begin tonight's proceedings with an acknowledgement of the land on which Heritage Toronto sits. Heritage Toronto is located on the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, uh, Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Anishinaabe, including the Chippewas and the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today, Toronto is host to many First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples. Toronto is within the territory of the Dish with One Spoon Treaty, which requires responsibility of those who use the land to share it peaceably and care for it. Heritage Toronto acknowledges this responsibility and recognizes the efforts of these nations in maintaining the land. To open tonight's proceedings, it is my honor to introduce Chief Stacy Laforme, elected chief of the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. I just told you who I am, where I'm from, what my clan is, what my Anishinaabe name is. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge the creator, the world around us, and our place within it. I'd like to acknowledge and offer my respects to the many nations that walk this land in the past, the many nations that walk it today, and welcome you to the treaty lands and territories of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe. I'd like to um, begin your event by offering you a prayer. We give thanks to the Creator for allowing this gathering. We ask that He guide us and forgive us when we falter and disappoint. For though we aspire to greatness, we are after all only human. Grant us a clear mind, a pure heart and courage, a clear mind to make intelligent, well thought out decisions, a pure heart to make decisions without personal bias and desire, and the courage to use both a clear mind and a pure heart in our lives. Let us set aside small differences. Let us concentrate on real issues. Let us not be bogged down in rhetoric. Let us live each day with a feeling of accomplishment and pride. Most importantly, let us remember we are not enemies nor are we adversaries. We share a similar past, a kindred spirit, and a common heritage. We must always remember the real reason we gather to do the right thing for our people our children, and our future. Miigwech. So, thank you for the invitation. Let me congratulate all of you who uh, are winning an award tonight. And of course, if there are winners, there are those of you who don't win. Uh, if I was there in person, I would offer each of you a hug of commiseration. Now whole groups of you are finally glad this is a, a virtual award ceremony, but I would still offer those. Regardless of whether you are getting an award or are just part of the Heritage family, I want to thank you. There are certain institutions and careers and directions in life that have a very significant role in who we are. I believe a commitment to the past when others just want to move ahead is a great calling and an important part of who we are today and who will be in the future. Your organization, as well as institutions such as libraries and institutions of higher learning, have a duty to the world to tell the truth, so truthful it hurts. And we are at a time when we must move forward, facing the truth of our shared history and build our future. And we must build on the real truth, the real history, for if we do not, we build on sand. Now, I want to read you a poem that I wrote 
actually called truth. History is but a snapshot of the past, taken by camera held to a certain angle. If the camera is damaged or flawed, the picture is unfocused, unclear. If the photographer is trying to capture a certain image, that is exactly what he captures at the exclusion of everything else. The historian researches every picture and bases each conclusion on fact. Yet for every story you know, there is more than one you don't. For every fact that is remembered, there is a truth left unclaimed. So how are we to know what is truth? Do we rely on a billion snapshots? No, we rely on the people history has touched. You, me, our parents, our grandparents, our children. For the past can only be truly judged by its reflection in today. So, the truth is not always easy to find. Sometimes it's not laying on the surface. Sometimes you have to dig, sometimes you have to work to uncover the truth. So I, I offer my respect and my thanks for the work you do. May uh, be safe, be heard. Thank you, Chief Laforme. Well, it has been wonderful since moving to uh, Toronto or Takaranto to, to connect with this city and learn more about this city, whether it be through the first peoples who inhabited this land or those who moved here like me and learned about it or from those who were born and raised here. I would now like to uh, welcome Mayor John Toy to say a few words. Hello, Mayor John Tory here, extending my warmest wishes to all of the attendees of the Heritage Toronto Awards. 2021 marks the return of the awards, a welcomed opportunity to celebrate the outstanding accomplishments in the field and learn more about new projects that are underway. Since 1974, the awards have recognized the individuals and the organizations and the projects themselves that have championed the importance of heritage to city building. I'm so glad that the awards have returned after regrettably being cancelled in 2020 due to COVID-19. We just started on a new focus on these awards, a new focus on innovation, some new awards that were being given, and this is all part of building a brighter future, which at the same time respects our past, which is something very important to me, and I believe very important on an increasing basis to our city. I am so inspired by how the heritage sector has persevered and continued to innovate through this difficult period. And so that means this evening we can see that beautifully exhibited through the nominations showcased in this year's award ceremony. Like others in the heritage industry, Heritage Toronto itself has adapted its programming to match the new post-pandemic world, producing, for example, more than 60 plaques this year alone, offering over 30 in-person and virtual tour programs, such that 15,000 people have viewed digital programming. That's terrific. For that, I want to thank each and every one of you for your contributions, capturing, preserving, celebrating our city's heritage, informing people about our city's heritage. And I hope you have a wonderful evening. Well, thank you, Mayor Tory. Now, our first award of the evening is the Community Heritage Award. Now, much, of, much of what makes Toronto special are its neighborhoods, its diverse communities, and the people who invest in them. The Community Heritage Award recognizes community and volunteer-based organizations working to support the heritage of Toronto. Joining us this evening to present the Community Heritage Award is Karen Whaley, Chair of the Juries Committee for Heritage Toronto. Thank you, Ismaila. It's my pleasure to be here tonight presenting the Community Heritage Award. Last year, the juries were not able to gather to appreciate all the incredible heritage work that's happening across the city. It was wonderful for us to be able to see each other again this summer, even if it was virtually through Zoom. Each of tonight's four award categories is independently adjudicated by a jury of experts. I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank all our jurors for the volunteering their time and expertise. Your participation helps celebrate the projects that ensure Toronto's heritage remains relevant and vibrant. It is now my pleasure to present the nominees for the 2021 Community Heritage Award. The 2021 Community Heritage nominees are Cabbage Town Short Film Festival. 
This volunteer-run annual festival offers curated screenings of outstanding short films that bring the community together. With over 200 submissions per year, the festival showcases a range of provocative, enlightening, and entertainment productions from around the globe. Jami Esplanade Named for the Swahili word for community, Jami Esplanade is an arts organization dedicated to creating community engagement and supporting young female leaders. The organization works to generate opportunities for dialogue and empowerment in the Esplanade community, engaging with people of all ages, backgrounds, household incomes, and sexual orientations. JaneFinch.com this community website promotes the unique cultural history of Toronto's Jane and Finch neighborhood. The website is managed by a volunteer team of local youth and residents working together to document and raise awareness about social justice issues affecting the community. Japanese Canadian Cultural Centre Since 1963, the centre has served as a gathering place for the Japanese Canadian community and has welcomed people of all backgrounds with an interest in Japanese culture. It offers programming for its 5,200 members as well as over 210,000 annual visitors. Midland Park Modernism Alliance Founded in 2011, the Alliance works to document, preserve, and promote Midland Park's mid-century modern houses. Now in its 10th year, the organization creates awareness and builds public appreciation and support for the distinctive historic character of this 1960s Scarborough community. Myseum of Toronto Founded in 2014, Myseum strives to redefine the museum experience, exploring the diverse narratives and perspectives that shape Toronto's past, present, and future. Ontario Jewish Archives, Blankenstein Family Heritage Centre. Since 1973, the OJA has been preserving the stories of Ontario's Jewish community. With materials dating to the 1850s, the archive captures every aspect of Jewish daily life in Ontario. Rise Up Digital Feminist Archive. Established in 2016, Rise Up is dedicated to collecting and preserving the stories of feminist activism from the 1970s to the 1990s. By making these resources accessible through an online platform, Rise Up brings increased awareness to the feminist movement and the role of women at the forefront of community-led activism. Tamil Archive Project Founded in 2016, the Tamil Archive Project prioritizes the experiences of all genders from racialized communities in the greater Toronto area with histories of marginalization. The Toronto Workers' History Project This ongoing heritage project was established by a group passionate about preserving the history of working-class individuals in Toronto making these stories available through a variety of media for audiences of all ages and backgrounds. West End Phoenix. This community newspaper focuses on sharing the stories of Toronto. The stories and illustrations in each issue share wide-ranging and diverse perspectives on Toronto's cultural heritage, including a focus on Black and Indigenous communities. And the 2021 Community Heritage Award is presented to the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center. The JCCC celebrates the vibrancy of Japanese culture and heritage in Canada. The center offers a wide range of programs for people of all backgrounds with an interest in Japanese culture. From film festivals to martial arts presentations, the Community Heritage Jury was impressed by the depth and breadth of the JCCC's programming. With a modest staff of 20, the jury was impressed by the over 1,000 volunteers who support the organization. Let's hear now from the team behind the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center. Congratulations. Hello, I'm Su Yen Chong, the Heritage Manager from the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center. For over 50 years, the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center has served as the gathering point for Japanese Canadian community and for those of non-Japanese ancestry who have interest in things Japanese in the greater Toronto area. 
And my name is James Heron. I'm the Executive Director of the Japanese Canadian Cultural Centre. And on behalf of the JCCC, the community and its many friends, I would like to say thank you. It is a great honour for us to receive this award. Thank you. Well, thank you, Karen, and congratulations again to the Japanese Canadian Cultural Centre. Well, I take great pleasure now in introducing you to Alison Bain, Executive Director of Heritage Toronto. Thank you, Zamila. It's so kind of you to work with our charity this evening, and we sincerely thank you and CBC for your support. I enjoy listening to you every morning, so what a treat to get to see you tonight. And thank you to everyone who's chosen to attend the awards tonight. I know we're all a bit zoomed out. So it's wonderful that so many of you are choosing to celebrate our nominees and what an amazing city we live in. Yes, the recent past has been challenging, but the heritage community has not only persevered, in many ways it's thrived. And at Heritage Toronto, we were galvanized by the change we saw around us. When the lockdowns began, our charity was nimble. When we had to cancel all in-person events, we created award-winning digital programming, producing 48 digital tours, stories, and online gatherings. Topics ranged from our Black heritage to public health lessons and first responders, and most recently dismantling anti-Indigenous racism. We heard from many people about the value of plaques serving as points of insight and reflection during your daily walks. So we actually accelerated our plaques program and installed 87 new plaques across the city this year. What I love about heritage is learning about people, their history, their stories, and their neighborhoods. So as soon as it was safe to do so, we relaunched our tours. We returned to Toronto streets with 18 tours covering topics that range from the feminist movement in Toronto, our amazing architecture, the importance of our waterfront green space and our indigenous history. And all these programs were only possible because of the passion and commitment of all of our supporters, including Toronto City Council, our donors, our community partners, our emerging historians and our outstanding volunteers. In particular, we would like to thank tonight's 21 corporate sponsors. These are people who understand that heritage is a solution to many of our city's challenges. The Heritage Toronto Awards would not be happening tonight without their support. We would especially like to thank Carpenters Union Local 27, Clifford Restoration, Heather and Little and Cam Ross Belcourt. On behalf of everyone at Heritage Toronto, we congratulate tonight's nominees for their hard work and passion. Thank you for showing us possibilities for the heritage sector as we move forward. We live in a great city, and I believe that all of us want to celebrate what is good and acknowledge and repair what is not good. The fact that you're here tonight is a testament to that work. So thank you, and again, congratulations to all of our nominees. And thank you, Alison. You know, you mentioned there your interest in, in learning about the people uh, through heritage. And uh, I love connecting and learning about the people generally, whether that be through oral storytelling or by written storytelling. And we now move to our next award of the evening, the 2021 Heritage Toronto Book Award, presented by Alessandria Trigella, uh, project manager from Clifford Restoration Limited. Uh, the Heritage Toronto Book Award recognizes outstanding nonfiction writing about Toronto's heritage and history. Thank you, Ismaila. The 18 nominees for this year's Book Award demonstrate how Toronto's heritage can come alive on the page, from photo-rich portraits of Toronto's parks and laneways to biographies of some of Canada's most famous prime ministers, rock bands, and artists. The diverse topics seen in this year's nominees show us that one size does not fit all when it comes to heritage writing. Within these 18 books, we find environmental essays, political memoirs, architectural critiques, and more. Some give us stories of Toronto from 100 years ago. Others reveal historic injustices still with us today, urging the reader to call, continue the call for change. It is now my pleasure to present the nominees for the 2021 Heritage Toronto Book Award. The 2021 Heritage Toronto Book Award nominees are 100 Years at the Beach, A History of the Beach Hebrew Institute, 1919 to 2019, by Dina Bain-Taylor from ECW Press. 
Accidental Wilderness, The Origins and Ecology of Toronto's Tommy Thompson Park, by Walter Kem and Robert Burley, from the University of Toronto Press. Anthem, Rush in the 70s, by Martin Popoff, from ECW Press. The Beautiful Mess of Toronto Laneways, by Matthew Blackett, from Spacing Media. Been Hoping We Might Meet Again, The Letters of Pierre Elliott Trudeau and Marshall McLuhan, by Elaine Kahn, from Novalis Publishing. The Billionaire Murders, by Kevin Donovan, from Penguin Random House. A Class by Themselves, The Origins of Special Education in Toronto and Beyond, by Jason Ellis, from the University of Toronto Press. The Flyer Vault, 150 Years of Toronto Concert History, by Daniel Tate and Rob Bowman, from Dundurn Press. Had It Coming, What's Fair in the Age of Me Too? by Robin Doolittle from Penguin Random House. Limelight, Rush in the 80s, by Martin Popoff from ECW Press. Michael Snow, Lives and Works, by James King from Dundurn Press. Murder in the Family, by Jeff Blackstock from Penguin Random House. Outrageous Misfits, female impersonator Craig Russell and his wife, Lori Russell Eady, by Brian Bradley from Dundurn Press. Remnants of Mid-Century Toronto by Vic Pawa from Spacing Media. Toronto Reborn, Design Successes and Challenges by Ken Greenberg from Dundurn Press. Toronto Trailblazers, Women in Canadian Publishing by Ruth Panofsky from the University of Toronto Press. Varsity Soldiers, the University of Toronto contingent of the Canadian Officers' Training Corps, 1914-1968, by Eric McGeer from the University of Toronto Press. Viva Mac, AIDS, Fashion, and the Philanthropic Practices of Mac Cosmetics, by Andrea Benoit from the University of Toronto Press. And the 2021 Heritage Toronto Book Award goes to Accidental Wilderness, The Origins and Ecology of Toronto's Tommy Thompson Park. This book features a rich collection of essays on Tommy Thompson Park curated by landscape architect and designer Walter H. Kem. The essays are accompanied by vivid images of the park from landscape photographer Robert Burley. The book jury felt Accidental Wilderness was both timely and accessible, a book that all ages can enjoy. It offers a powerful message of community advocacy and action to build and protect a unique part of Toronto's environmental heritage. The jury appreciated how the book wove together beautiful photographs and a variety of perspectives on Tommy Thompson Park, offering an engaging and beautiful read. My name is Walter Kim, and this book has been a labor of love that explores the history and significance of a unique Toronto green space, Tommy Thompson Park. It began as a landfill site for the city's rubble and was transformed into an ecological refuge for birds, animals, plant life, and people. Internationally recognized as a wildlife sanctuary, it was created through the commitment of a small but determined group of citizens under the banner of Friends of the Spit, working with myself and the Toronto Region Conservation Authority. And my name is Robert Burley, and I'd like to express our thanks to the contributing writers, the design and production team, and especially to the University of Toronto Press for the commitment to this project. We'd also like to recognize the support of the Mary and Jim Conacher family, Ryerson University, and the Ontario Association of Landscape Architects. Finally, a big thanks to Heritage Toronto for this recognition. Well, thank you, Alessandria. And uh, congratulations again to Walter Kem and Robert Burley for Accidental Wilderness. And uh, as luck would have it, that Accidental Wilderness was one of the first places that I uh, spent a big chunk of time birding in the city, was taken by uh, a biologist who uh, told me about the importance of the landscape there and how it was all brought together. Now, we also want to take this moment to congratulate the winners of the Heritage Toronto Awards book draw. Now, these three winners will each receive a copy of tonight's winning book, Accidental Wilderness. Our winners are being announced now in our event chat. Uh, all those who registered for the awards before October 8th 
were eligible for the book draw. The next, we move to our Public History Award. This award recognizes multimedia and collaborative projects that engage with Toronto's heritage. Such projects challenge, inform, and inspire the public, creating more meaningful connections with our city's history. The nine nominees for this year's Public History Award are also eligible for Heritage Toronto's first ever People's Choice Award. Now, uh, this award, chosen by you, of course, includes a cash prize of $1,000 for the winner and is separate from the juried award. But first, it's now my pleasure to present the 2021 Public History nominees. The 2021 Public History nominees are 4D Chinatown. This immersive online experience showcases both the history of Toronto's Chinatown and the daily life that contributes to the rich fabric of this neighborhood. Let's rename Dundas Street. Beginning as an online petition in June 2020, this organization spurred a vote by Toronto City Council to rename Dundas Street. The group raises awareness and takes action on the impact of historical narratives and heritage infrastructure. Love Isn't Limited, Joan Latchford. This exhibition of Joan Latchford's photographs reveals Toronto's rich diversity and diaspora during the 1960s and 70s. Latchford's work sought to reveal the everyday lives of newcomer communities to Toronto, depicting the city's spontaneity and growth in a way that had rarely been documented in Canada at the time. Old Toronto Series this series has produced over 40 short mini-docs on Toronto history. The series seeks to make history more approachable, engaging followers of all walks of life, ages, and orientations. Twice Blessed Housed at the Miles Nadal Jewish Community Centre, Twice Blessed traces the history of the Jewish queer community in Toronto. With a focus on activism and community building, the exhibition draws on the collections of amateur archivist Johnny A. Bush. Unlocked, a flow of colorful connections in lockdown. Shot in the spring of 2020, this short film asks 11 women to express how three months of isolation affected their sense of identity. These interwoven stories invite the viewer to contemplate how the pandemic has impacted each of us differently. A Trip to the Market Presented by the Ontario Jewish Archives, this tour program welcomed nearly 3,000 students to Kensington Market to learn about the challenges and opportunities faced by Jewish people living in 20th century Toronto. The Village by CBC Podcasts In the first season of this digital audio series, investigative journalist Justin Ling tackles the police investigation into serial killer Bruce MacArthur. The series uncovers new details of cold cases, piecing together decades of police repression of the queer community. You Moon. This community-based collaborative art program culminated in two public art installations in Toronto's Chinatown, bringing support to local business and animating city streets during the 2021 Lunar New Year celebrations. Now, before we announce the winner of the Jury Public History Award, you will now have a chance to vote for your favorite project. You'll have two minutes to make your decision. Please access the voting box by clicking the vote button on the top right corner of your screen, right next to the chat button. Then make your selection.
Okay, time's up. Voting has now closed. Now we'll, we'll announce the winner of the first ever People's Choice Award shortly. But first, to present the juried award for public history, I'd like to welcome Christopher Castellano, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Camrost Felcor. Thank you, Ismaila. It's great to be here tonight to present this award. The nine nominees represent such an impressive range of communities and issues within the city's heritage sector. It's these kind of diverse projects and undertakings, be it by current or previous generations, that have helped turn Toronto into the international city that we all love to call home. Camros Felcor, headed by David and Angela Feldman, would like to congratulate all nominees for their work in, as our organization continues to be proud supporters and partners of Heritage Toronto. And now I'm delighted to announce that the 2021 juried public history award goes to the OJA presents a trip to the market presented by the Ontario Jewish archives. Over 3000 students from grades six to 10 participated in a trip to the market in May, 2019. Held in Kensington Market, this program presented, uh, presented a dynamic experience of Toronto's Jewish history. The public history jury felt a trip to the market was a well thought out and multi-dimensional project which efficiently blurred past and present through an immersive experience. The jury was impressed with the depth and creativity of this youth focused project using the urban environment of Kensington's market as an outdoor classroom. Thank you so much. The Ontario Jewish Archives is delighted to win the Public History Award from Heritage Toronto. In May 2019, the Ontario Jewish Archives toured close to 3,000 students from grades 6 to 10 through Kensington Market. This was a wonderful partnership with the Toronto District School Board, Toronto Urban Study Centre at the Kensington Community School, the Ashkenaz Foundation and the Kiber Synagogue. To ensure a memorable experience, each tour included a surprise live performance by Ishe Bookbinder, who was dressed in period costume as a street peddler, scripted by Alon Nashman. He sang, danced, and pulled items from his cart to describe his family's personal immigration story and the challenges of making a living in early 20th century Toronto. The OJA was so pleased to provide the opportunity for a largely non-Jewish student population to explore the sights, smells and sounds of the market. This innovative program introduced students to Kensington Market, an important destination for the early Jewish community, as well as subsequent new immigrant groups, a significant part of our local history. Thank you, Christopher. And congratulations again to the Ontario Jewish Archives for this fantastic program. Well, I'm now excited to announce the results for the first ever People's Choice Award. Uh, the votes are all in, and this winner chosen by you is all Old Toronto Series. Uh, massive congratulations to Old Toronto Series for this win. The team associated with the project will receive $1,000. Next, I'd like to introduce Lisa Chalidopoulos, a chair of Heritage Toronto's Board of Directors to speak about its Emerging Historians program. Thank you, Ismaila, and congratulations to all of tonight's award winners and nominees. While reviewing your profiles on the Heritage Toronto site, I was struck by a common thread that runs through each project and across the categories. Whatever your focus and however you approach it, in film, through masonry, in writing, or with in-person events, at the center of every one of the 47 nominated projects is a group of people striving to connect communities and advocating for the kind of Toronto that is accessible, equitable, and open to all. I am so moved by tonight's many examples of the heritage sector working to build a better city. And I'm proud of Heritage Toronto's contributions to this effort, especially through our Emerging Historians program. Over the past two years, we have worked closely with 40 Emerging Historians to produce new and timely digital programming, plaques, walking tours, and even tonight's awards event. Through the program, we support and empower the next generation of heritage advocates, providing them with mentorship and paid work. In turn, emerging historians bring new ideas, energy, and perspectives that will continue to drive and diversify the sector. The Emerging Historians program is donor funded, and I invite you to invest in our emerging historians tonight. 
your gift will help them to build the kind of Toronto that is accessible, equitable, and open to all. It is now my great pleasure to introduce you to three of our amazing emerging historians. So I think through my time as an emerging historian with Heritage Toronto, I undertook a lot of research and it was very much linked to my work as a heritage consultant. It, it really opened my eyes to, to kind of the extent of, of all the different resources that one might look at in preparing the different kinds of reports that I'd be working on at work. So my name is Sundas and I've been with Heritage Toronto since the summer of 2021 working as an intern uh, through my university. Because of this experience I, I was able to enroll in a public history course on campus which focuses on museum institutions, public sites, and archives and I think it's thanks to this program, the Emerging Historians program, that really helped me to like shape my career and affirm my choice that this is what I want to go into for my future academic pathway and career. My experience with Heritage Toronto has helped me in a number of different ways. I had the great opportunity to audition for a television program called Employable Me. Now, I should mention I have Asperger's as well as hydrocephalus, and so as a result, I, I have um, two disabilities that have made it very, very difficult for me to find permanent employment. I ended up getting hired on to be the narrator for this position um, to record the audio tour. You know, it's it's great to have this on, on my resume, but beyond that also, I gained so much valuable experience that I've been able to continue to use in my work in the heritage sector. I think the thing that makes me so passionate about Toronto's history and, and really history in general is just this idea of being able to hear about people's stories. As a young Muslim woman, I, I want to see more opportunities given to, to visible minorities. And I, I feel like once they're given the chance, like when someone takes a chance on them, they'll, they'll take the lead and they can do so much. They can make so much like impact on their community, on their people. For me, like especially in during the in-person tour, that was just, that was so exciting for me. And it was so, it was awesome. I didn't know much about St. James Town. I was also interested in telling stories that weren't necessarily popular. Just through the process like that, it would be, interesting to be able to tell a story about um, a part of Toronto that maybe people aren't maybe it's not first on the list to go to go visit to or or people haven't visited but I've always been interested in. My name is Oria Barra and I'm an emerging historian with Heritage Toronto. Well, we have now reached the final awards category of the evening, the Built Heritage Awards, presented by Heather and Little, as well as the Carpenters and Allied Workers Local 27. Now, this year, the category featured three awards, Craftsmanship, Adaptive Reuse, and Heritage Planning and Architecture. The three awards in this category recognize projects that successfully adapted an historic property or architectural features. They also recognize excellence in conservation practice and craftsmanship. It's now my pleasure to present the nominees for the 2021 Built Heritage Awards. The 2021 Built Heritage nominees are 85 Richmond Street West. Built in 1923, this federal building is one of Toronto's few remaining first-generation skyscrapers. The project, which required the involvement of numerous skilled crafts, reinforces the surrounding heritage urban context of Toronto's financial district. Centennial College, Downsview Campus Centre for Aerospace and Aviation. Once the centre of aviation manufacturing and design in Canada, this building was transformed into an innovative learning institution for the college's Aviation and Engineering Technology and Applied Science programs. 
The project included the rehabilitation of the Heritage Building to maintain its historic elements while preparing it for new use. The Bishop's Palace at St. Michael's Cathedral Basilica. Completed in late 2020, the exterior conservation of the Bishop's Palace is the most recent phase of the rehabilitation of this early 19th century cathedral. The exterior conservation project involved stabilizing, improving, and preserving the deteriorated heritage building envelope, while maintaining the architectural coherence of the series of buildings that make up the St. Michael's historic site. Holy Blossom Temple Home to Toronto's first Jewish congregation, this historic synagogue has been transformed into a modern, integrated campus. The design and the execution of the renewal project celebrates the qualities of Holy Blossom's original 1930s-era buildings, while simultaneously creating a new, airy space for communal events. La Blas Grossateria the restoration and expansion of the 1928 La Blas Grossateria building has preserved a remarkable example of Toronto's waterfront industrial heritage. The completed project respects the warehouse's history while making a confident statement about its readiness for another century of use. Massey Tower A former Young Street Bank building has found new life with the Massey Tower project. Interior and exterior conservation work prioritize the rehabilitation of the original 1905-era building and its connection to Young Street and nearby Massey Hall, seamlessly blending this historic site with a modern, multi-use tower. Montgomery Square Located on the site of the 19th century Montgomery's Tavern, Montgomery Square is a thoughtful adaptive reuse of a historic post office building. The project highlights the building's original Art Deco features while providing an expanded mixed-use program for the surrounding neighborhood. The Paradise Theatre A complete reimagining of a historic Toronto cinema, the rehabilitation of the Paradise Theatre paid tribute to the building's Art Deco past while also creating a functional and approachable space for the community. Elements from the building's original 1937 design were restored including the marquee signage, exterior facade, and box office. Winchester Hotel and Hall. This project saw the detailed exterior revitalization of a Cabbage Town landmark. Conservation work ranged from brick restoration to heritage carpentry and called on a range of heritage and modern skills. Drawing upon the same materials and techniques employed by 19th century builders, the project team brought back the building's original appearance from the 1880s. So those are the nominees. I'd like now to introduce Mike Papania, Executive Vice President of Operations at Heather and Little to present the 2021 Built Heritage Craftsmanship Award. Thank you, Ismailia. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. The Craft Craftsmanship in Built Heritage Award recognizes the skill, artisanship, and technical know-how that is vital to bringing a heritage building back to life. This award, which is making its debut this year, is presented to a project that emphasizes both the preservation and reinvention of traditional architectural techniques. In its deliberations, the jury considers to what extent a project has employed appropriate construction techniques, conservation principles, as well as materials that are compatible with the heritage building's original architectural qualities. And the winner of the 2021 Craftsmanship in Built Heritage Award is Paradise Theater. This project brought back to life a stunning example of Toronto's hallmark early 20th century cinemas. Reopened in December, 2019, Paradise Theater is a roadmap for how Toronto's historical theaters can become neighborhood hubs once again. The jury felt the project was deserved rec recognition for creating a venue 
that engages the surrounding 21st century community while maintaining the integrity of the original early 20th century design. The project team demonstrated an impressive commitment to heritage design standards and craftsmanship while overcoming the many challenges presented by building code using alternate means and methods to accommodate modern requirements. This includes maintaining the stone facade and the theater's distinctive interior art deco styling. First, I'd like to read a short statement from ERA Architects, the Heritage Architects for the project. Quote, thank you for this honor. We're proud to have been part of this transformative project. By restoring the original theater function, reconstructing its lost historic elements and extending the life of the space with the modern standards and accessibility. The project team succeeded in bringing a neighborhood landmark to life again. ERA could not have done this without the dedication and expertise of the whole project team of skilled craftspeople and trades. Clifford Masonry, Braskin Metal Fabricators, Novak Cladding, Pride Signs, as well as Ware Malcolm and Solid Design Creative. And a heartfelt thank you to Maury Toss for the vision to reimagine the Paradise Theater's potential. Thank you again from all, end quote. Now let's hear from Ian Rydberg, founder and principal of Solid Design Creative, the crafts team associated with the Paradise Theater Project. Thank you, Heritage Toronto, for this prestigious award and honoring us. Um, thank you, Maury Taz, for this incredible opportunity and contribution to the community and preservation of such a beautiful heritage building. I'd like to thank my team at Solid Design for your many years of hard work and dedication to this project. I would also like to thank the other consultants on the project, ERA, Ware Malcolm, Hunter Heritage, Northern Structures, Milk and Bell Lighting, and the many other consultants that were on board. Thank you for all your hard work and help getting us here. Um, the main goal of this project was to create a space that was a cultural hub for the community, for musicians, artists, and film buffs to come together with great culinary experience. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for your help. Well, thank you, Mike, and congratulations again to Paradise Theater. Now I'd like to welcome Sean Blake, representative of Carpenter's Local 27, to present the final two Built Heritage Awards of the evening. Thank you, Ismaila. The Adaptive Reuse and Built Heritage Award recognizes heritage buildings repurposed to meet today's needs. It considers the degree to which the project meets current needs while maintaining the integrity of the original design and how the project demonstrates a strong commitment to heritage, heritage conservation. And the recipient of the 2021 Adaptive Reuse Award is Centennial College Danzu Campus, Center for Aerospace and Aviation. Centennial College's new aerospace campus adaptively reuses one of the most remarkable sites in Canadian aviation history. The jury was impressed with the, with the adaptive reuse of a former aeronautical manufacturing facility, in particular, that the new educational focus of the space would remain on the building's original focus on flight. The project team created a vibrant community hub that will have a positive impact on the surrounding community and continue to contribute to the legacy of Canadian aviation. Let's hear from the winning project team from Centennial College. Hi, I'm Kristen Bates, project architect. Thank you, Heritage Toronto, for recognition of this educational adaptive reuse project that saves the celebrated de Havilland Plant One from an unknown future and advances the story of aviation development in Canada. We are honored to be a part of this ongoing history. Hi, I'm Sean Slowski, architect at MJMA. Thanks to our ambitious client, Centennial College, along with the Candle Lands Corporation for the vision and commitment in bringing this project to reality. Shout out to our design partner, Stantec, and of course, our excellent and dedicated design team of ERA Architects, Cross Engineering, Blackwell, Stantec Landscape, and Stantec Civil Engineering. And now for the final award of the evening, the Heritage Planning and Architecture in Built Heritage Award 
recognizes projects that represent the successful application of appropriate conservation and planning principles, including methodologies and assessment of challenges, as well as considered solutions. And the winner of the 2021 Heritage Planning and Architecture in Built Heritage Award is Massey Tower. Massey Tower and the adaptive reuse of the Canadian Bank of Commerce building celebrates the site's history and contribution to Toronto's downtown development. The project was a great opportunity to celebrate, celebrate sorry, and revitalize the landmark building while developing a multi-use tower. The jury was impressed by the level of commitment by the owner and project team to successfully develop a comprehensive master plan which maintained the integrity of the historic building while also sensitively incorporating a modern tower. The jury also recognized the complicated and lengthy negotiations with many stakeholders in order for this proposal to be successful. We'll hear from Mod Developments, one of the architectural teams responsible for the Massey Tower project. Good evening. Tonight marks nearly a decade since we first bought the site at 197 Young Street, the former Canadian Bank of Commerce building built in 1905. At the time, it was at the top of the list of heritage buildings that was in danger of demolition by neglect. Our development concept included not only restoring the bank, but also donating land to Massey Hall, which would allow them to expand their facility and restore their iconic interior. At times, we felt more like archaeologists than developers as we lifted linoleum tiles to expose the brilliant mosaics underneath that had been unseen for almost 60 years. I want to thank our incredible team of ERA, Ruri Ponturini, Ciccone Simone, Tricon Capital, and Clifford Restoration for their amazing work in bringing this project to life. Well, thank you so much, Sean, and congratulations again to the Massey Tower team. Now, please join me in a final congratulations to all of the award winners and nominees recognized this evening. Through projects like the ones you've seen tonight, Heritage in Toronto is building back even stronger than it was before. I want to thank you for having me as your host for the evening. It's been a pleasure and an honor to be involved with this event. And thank you all for joining us to celebrate outstanding heritage advocates in our city. Good night. <laughs>